Hello everybody, so you might have just tuned in from my previous video and excited to learn more about the major constellations of the night sky. So stay tuned, and this episode we're going to learn about Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Right, so tonight then, we're going to be looking at Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. So, for those of you who may not know these constellations, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are two constellations which can be viewed from the Northern Hemisphere. So for any countries living in Northern Latitudes, you will be able to see Ursa Major and Ursa Minor in the night sky. And these constellations are of particular interest to astronomers because they are what are called in astronomical terms circumpolar, which means these two constellations will never rise or set. At any season, at any time of the year, you'll be able to see these constellations in the night sky. Now some of you may say, well, these constellations appear in different positions at different times of the year. And you are correct, because this is all to do with our orbit around our local star, the Sun. In doing so, our perception of the universe changes throughout the seasons. So I'm going to show you guys the constellations using one of these. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a laser pointer, and astronomers like myself use one of these so that we can identify the stars and the constellations, and I must hazard a word of caution with these things because they are super bright, they are lasers, it can dazzle eyes very easily. Okay, so let's give it a shot. I've got my own personal lightsaber, haha. <laughs> so, these seven stars are some of the most well-recognised stars in the Northern Hemisphere. I personally know them as Ursa Major, but they take on so many meanings from around the world, also being recognised as the Big Dipper and the Plough. Now, it's probably recognised as one of the most famous constellations purely because of its size, and when we look at Ursa Major, it is the third largest constellation in the night sky. So ancient civilizations once regarded Ursa Major as a bear, and in relation to Greek mythology, the god Callisto was transformed into a bear by the god Artemis, and was placed in the night sky. In this instance, if we refer to Ursa Major as a bear, we are currently looking at the tail of the bear, and this extends to the body, and then eventually to its head. Then below are its legs, which extend off, the two back ones, and then the ones at the front. So it's quite amazing, really, how our ancient ancestors were able to depict these patterns in the night sky in order to tell the tales of myth and legend. There's some really exciting deep sky objects to observe within Ursa Major when using optical instruments like telescopes. And there's two which I've currently got in mind, and that is M81 and M82. Let me show you where they are. By using the two N stars, M81 and M82 are very near. M81 is a spiral galaxy, also known as Bode's Galaxy. M82 is known as the Cigar Galaxy, as funnily enough, it looks like a cigar placed in the night sky. And another really exciting astronomical object is a planetary nebula. M97 is located very close 
to one of the corner stars of Ursa Major. And what we are seeing is the remnants of a star which has undergone supernova. Now for me, one of the most characteristic spiral galaxies is M101. By using the two end stars, we can form an imaginary triangle to find the location of this galaxy. Its light is so fragile and faint. When you use longer exposures in astrophotography, we're able to reveal this faint detail to find structure in the spiral arms and details at the centre of its core. So the second constellation we're going to find is Ursa Minor. So if you guys hadn't guessed, Ursa Minor is a smaller version of Ursa Major. Let me show you where to look. By using the two end stars which make up the bowl of the Dipper, we can now use these stars to form an imaginary line until we reach the next brightest star. This is called Polaris and is very important because it's close to the North Celestial Pole, which means when we look at Polaris, we're looking at true north and was once used by ancient civilizations for seafaring to find and navigate across the oceans. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I think it's so important to start with the basics of astronomy so that we can begin to learn more about what we can see in our open window to the universe. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching this video. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my social media channels to follow my latest work. And with my celestial lightsaber, I'd like to wish you clear skies and all the best.